One request that I frequently get is for vegetarian dishes that are satisfying to meat lovers, because many households have both vegetarians and omnivores living under the same roof, which makes group meals a challenge. Simply combining cauliflower and pasta would be very bland, and not at all satisfying to someone who wants a meat dish. The secret to this is the some molecular food chemistry that transforms the cauliflower into something else buttery and more meat-like in flavor. The exact chemistry for this is too complicated to explain here, but I do explain it in detail in Volume 3 of my cookbook series, available in fall of 2016. I'm dividing this recipe essentially into two parts. There's the preparation of the cauliflower, and then we'll make it with the with the pasta. So uh, I've got the cauliflower here. I'll, I'll cut this into florets in a few minutes. I'm not going to make you painfully watch me sit there and cut it into florets like most people on YouTube do. You don't want to see that. Uh, I've got some basil here. This is fresh basil, but it's past its prime. Perfect application. This is, this is not very pretty anymore. Still plenty of flavor. It'll work just fine in this. One and a half teaspoons of pink peppercorns. You cannot substitute other peppercorns for this. They're not even peppercorns in the in the same sense of the word as uh, black peppercorns or white or green. They're in their own category, and they have a chemical in here. We're gonna. This is a, a kind of a molecular gastronomy recipe, and we're taking advantage of some of the chemistry in the pink peppercorns uh, that is, is rarely exploited. Uh, I'm going to explain that in volume two of my. Uh, sorry, I'm going to explain that in volume three of my cookbook series, but it's more than I can get into here. Um, and we have a half a teaspoon of baking soda. That's not baking powder, it's baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, uh, also for the molecular chemistry aspect, and a couple of cloves of garlic here. Now, the first step here is to grind these pink peppercorns up. Don't add the salt first. This, the sequence of this is important. So, again, I'm not, not going to watch you, make you watch me grind these up to a powder right now. So you get the idea. Grind them well. After the ground, I'm going to add the garlic. I just coarsely chopped it. And uh, as you can see, it's about uh, three tablespoons of uh, basil that's been uh, cut up some. Teaspoon of coarse salt. This is going to act as an abrasive. I'm going to go back to grinding this some more. I'll show you what it looks like in a minute here. You have to you really grind this together well. And once you've gotten it down to where it's almost a paste by itself, we're going to add 25 milliliters of the olive oil and now the baking soda. Give it a final grind here. And I'm going to allow it to stand here on its own um, at room temperature while I cut up the uh, cauliflower into the florets. And you want to cut the cauliflower into reasonably small pieces, about the size that would fit on a tablespoon if you were making a soup. This will shrink some and it will also get kind of crumbled up in the process of, of cooking the final dish. So don't worry that these aren't quite bite sized, they're a little bit bigger than they would be for bite size because in the final dish it'll be fine. You still want to have some nice large pieces, you just don't want to have impossibly large chunks that need to be cut with a, with a knife. Now I'm scraping out the uh, contents of the mortar here. Yeah. We're just going to toss to combine this. You can use your fingers too, more efficient actually. And then spread it out on, uh, preferably on a silicone mat. You can just do it on a, a plain metal baking sheet, but, but it won't be as good. If you have the silicone mat, it'll keep it from burning on the bottom. And then uh, this is going to get roasted in the 190 degrees Celsius oven right now. Here's what it looks like after it comes out of the oven. There's still going to be some uh, firmness to it. That's good because, it's, forget, it's going to be cooked a second time and you don't want this to just turn into mush in the end. Um, so it's important though to leave it stand like this at room temperature until it comes to room temperature before you do anything else with it, whether you're proceeding on or you're going to refrigerate it and use it the next day or a couple days later, whatever. Let it stand like this. Let it finish cooling off and, and internally cooking because there's that residual heat that's still working on the inside pieces of, of all of these cauliflower.
Now we're ready to continue. It's got the uh, cauliflower that was cooked a couple of days ago and refrigerated. Uh, I've got a large onion, well, medium, medium large onion. I'm going to peel and slice uh, some anchovies. You can use plain olive oil. This is a good opportunity to use uh, some of that olive oil that was left over from the um, marinated broccoli stems if you have it. Uh, this works especially well. It's, it's going to add a lot more flavor, but if you don't have it, you can use regular olive oil. And this Mafalda pasta. And you can use other pastas too. I just like this one for the texture and the feel for it uh, with this particular dish. It's, uh, of course, use an Italian one, <laughs> good quality. I have boiling salted water at the back and I've weighed out 200 grams of this pasta. Now whether you use it whole or you, you break it in half first is up to you. I find breaking it in half first is going to make it easier to, to um, on the plate. It'll be easier to pick up and eat, but you know, it's up to you. And about 30 grams of that olive oil. And I weighed these onions out. It turned out to be about 150 grams after they were peeled and sliced. see some browning starting to develop on the onions, now turn the heat down to four. It was on about uh, seven initially. And we're going to continue cooking these slowly. Uh, right now it's been about ten minutes. After about twenty minutes now, the onions are nicely brown. going to add this cauliflower in. It was cooked before. Partly to warm it back up, partly to incorporate the flavor with the uh, onion. Now I've got half a dozen anchovies here that uh, I rinsed and I'm just going to break them up into the into the sauce. And, yeah, I know you probably think you hate anchovies. When they're broken up and they're incorporated like this, you won't taste them. They just add umami. They add a, a depth of flavor. Very common ingredient in Italian food and uh, often not even considered, uh, it's, it's still considered a vegetarian dish even if it has anchovies in it. But of course, you can leave them out. It's up to you, it's your dish. I'm gonna cook it like this for just a couple minutes, then we're gonna add the pasta. Okay, it's been a couple of minutes. I'm gonna add this pasta in. I have to use some tongs to mix it around. get it going here a little bit, you can add a little bit more of this olive oil or olive oil from the uh, marinated broccoli stems, which is even better. Okay, this is almost ready to, to finish up and plate here. Almost ready. Well, as long as you're not trying to make this a vegetarian dish, you can mix in a little uh, prosciutto, um, diced up prosciutto, add a little Parmesan cheese to the top of this. You've got a wonderful dish here. The second volume of my cookbook is now available through Amazon and other booksellers. It covers the YouTube recipes from the last eight months with more in-depth information. I received requests for the procedures on all recipes and I've listened to you. Every recipe has step-by-step -step directions and of course there are recipes that aren't on YouTube. But this is not just a recipe book. Far from it as you can see from some of the topics scrolling by here. I'm certain that anyone who watches my channel and any serious cook will find this book a treasury of useful and new information you won't find anywhere else. If you want to know more about my adventures as a chef around the world and have some great laughs along the way, be sure to check out the video tour of my book, 40 Years in One Night. It's up on YouTube right now. Click the link. Also look for my cocktail book, Cocktails of the South Pacific and Beyond, Advanced Mixology, available through Amazon online.